Welcome to the 2021 Virtual Sea Scout Academy. This is a pre recording of a v class that took place on October 19th from 1900 to 2000 Mountain Time. Today we'll be covering ABLE Requirements 8A, B, C, and E. You can review your 2020 version of the Sea Scout Manual from pages 166 to 177. Hello, my name is Braley. I'm a Sea Scout from ship 3821 Dunkirk, New York of the SSS Earn. I'm an Eagle Scout, local camp staff, currently an ordinary Sea Scout, 2021 20, SEAL graduate, and previous Area 4 boatswain. Today's requirement, they're asking us to describe the various kinds of anchor road and the advantages and disadvantages of each type, to identify the parts of the anchor cable starting with the anchor and ending at the vessel, to describe the methods of marking chain or road and demonstrate that you know the chain or road markings on your ship's vessel. Now, while we can't do this in the presentation, I will help you in constructing, uh, giving you tips in constructing a watch schedule and, under, and an explanation of what a watch is. Finally, we'll identify a capstan and a windlass and explain why they're used in handling line, wire rope, and chain. So before talking about road, I want to review um, some facts, quick facts about anchors. So we use them for temporary mooring. Uh, we use them in a variety of conditions, being weather and ground types. Um, in order to release an anchor, we grip, we pull on it vertically, um, which means that the pull it gives to the boat is horizontal. And also, anchors are very heavy. So let's keep those all in mind as we move forward. Anchor roads are what connects the anchor to the vessel, and these can be made out of rope or chain. Now, rope was uh, traditionally made out of natural fibers, uh, such as manila, until around World War II, where we gained nylon fibers. Now, the benefits of rope is that it's very e cheap, it's very easy to handle, and it can withstand shock. Now, uh, with those, uh, rope also is easy to wear. Chain roads are much heavier and should really only be used for larger vessels. Now, notice how the weight of the, the road uh, sags down to the bottom. This actually adds to anchoring since we pull horizontally. Uh, this helps uh, assist the anchor with the extra weight of the boat. Pain road is much heavier and really should be used um, for larger vessels. Notice how the weight of the road pulls it down to the bottom. And because we're pulling horizontally, this, act, this aids the anchor in, um, in anchoring. Now, uh, chain road is also, um, it's durable, but is non, um, it doesn't absorb shock. So in conditions where we think there's going to be high weather and the boat's going to be tugging, we add what's called a snub or a snubber. And this al um, allows the windlass to, um, this takes the shock away from the windlass and adds it to the hull of the boat. Uh, so that in the morning when we wake up, uh, our windlass isn't blown, we can still operate and retrieve our, our anchor. Now, the third type uh, combines both the weight and durability of the chain with the handling of the rope. And a chain and rope road is most, um, is most likely what you, you'll find on a vessel. Now, we'll look at the parts of an anchor road, uh, the main parts being the anchor, the chain, and the line. Often you have to put these together, so the anchor will come with a ring, which then you use shackles to attach to the chain. Now on your line, you use an eye splice um, in order to create a loop, and then you put a thimble inside the eye splice so that your shackle and your rope don't wear on each other. For extra dur durability, we add safety wires to hold the thimble in place, and then seizing to hold the splice together with the road continuing. So we have the anchor, the ring, shackles, chain, then the thimble, ice splice, safety wire, seasonings, and road. And I hope you got that, because now it's your turn to label those. So take a minute. How did you do? I hope you did well. So 
now that you know we have this parts of a road but sometimes it can be hard to to know where we are uh, having it all on a spool or in an anchor hold so part of uh, part of using roads is we use a system uh, that's based off of uh, marking the distances and we call those distances one shot um, so we label each shot on the road and this helps us know how much we have left. Uh, one shot is equal to 15, 15 fathoms, which if you recall, a fathom is six feet. So when we say we have 15 fathoms, we have 90 feet. So one shot is equal to 90 feet. Uh, a common system that's used um, often in the military is taking the joining, um, uh, the joining loop or often a common system that's used uh, it, especially in the military to to label your your shots is taking the the hook the, or the the chain link that joins two shots together and coloring that red and then based off of which shot you have uh, you would start with one on either side so this would be your first shot then with the next shot that gets laid out you would go to the next link and you can continue uh, so this goes no matter what direction you just paint the next uh, link white uh, then eventually you get to near the end of your line um, so you paint uh, either one or to be safer you'd paint the entire shot uh, yellow this would be the second to last. Uh, so you'd have 180 feet left of shot. And then what we have is uh, last, in your last shot is called your danger shot. And you paint that entire thing red uh, because as soon as you see that, uh, actually, as soon as you see the yellow, you know that if you're not able to actually to, um, to stop your, your road, then everyone needs to clear out the area. Uh, you can find some uh, some kind of humorous videos of uh, big commercial ships dropping their anchors, something goes wrong, and the road just kind of swings around, and oftentimes there's sparks involved, um, there's large damages, so as soon as you see these, make sure everyone evacuates. Now, this isn't the only system to mark. Um, some places, uh, instead of using paint, they'll use zip ties, or they'll have ribbon or string that they put inside the road. So there's many options. Um, which ones do you think are the best? What which ones? Uh, which system does your crew use? So uh, now we'll talk about how to create a watch schedule. So this is the general layout. Uh, what, first watch starting at twenty hundred and the last ending at six hundred. And I want you to take some time and think about how you could evenly disperse the members of your ship within this. Um, are you able to use adult members uh, and youth, or d does it just have to be one uh, one of those? Um, is there somebody that may need to do a task early in the morning and cannot stand watch, or it might be more beneficial for them to stand watch? Is there a pattern you could use, um, say, ranking it, ranking them uh, side by side, or making weird lines so that uh, people don't assume that you're being biased? Now, I have two columns here, uh, because when you're on a watch, uh, oftentimes uh, being on a watch can be kind of boring. I, <laughs> I did this for SEAL, and we some of us fell asleep often, uh, so we'd have alarm to wake us up. Um, but one way that you could save that is by adding two people to a watch. Um, you can also, by adding two people, you can make the watches longer. Uh, they're overlapping and you just have that much more security. So I advise you to have a watch with at least, at least two people on it one time. So, um, yeah, when you're in a watch, uh, things that you're looking for um, when you're at anchor uh, you want to be making sure that your boat, um, because there's going to be tides, so you want to make sure that you're not 
maybe hitting into the dock or there's objects emerging around you. Um, you want to make sure that your line is actually um, still connected. Uh, if you, uh, if your chain or uh, possibly your rope wears out, then you might start floating off. So you, um, a launch schedule is really important. Uh, it allows the majority of people to rest, and then uh, for the sacrifice of an hour or two, uh, we can keep everyone safe. So now uh, we talked about a anchor is very heavy. Uh, so originally they would use a capstan um, to help hoist that up. Uh, there's great videos I'll put uh, I'll share with you of how the Indian Star uh, ship used their capstan. Uh, capstan is a barrel, uh, typically with spokes that come out, uh, like here, and this is uh, this is really just a tool for handling a, um, lines with a lot of uh, weight on them. Uh, so you can use them. They'll sometimes have two gears depending on the direction you go, um, but you can use, uh, you can add people to these to push them along um, so that you have the entire strength. Or as you see this guy in, in the top, he's using it to cause friction um, and hold the line. So uh, captions then were used and paired with the windlass. See the captain up top. And the windlass is what actually drives your um what drives your anchor uh, so you don't have to handle the chain or line by hand uh, you would power the windlass using capstan and then uh, using this what looks like a differential drive you would uh, then pull in or let out your anchor uh, we've now adapted to more modern versions uh, like you see on the right um, where the instead of it being man powered, these are done by a machine or um, done by a motor or an engine. And since we have these, we can now rotate these um, to be either vertical or horizontal, uh, windless or capstans. Uh, so a horizontal uh, gives you um, uh, 90 degrees of coverage around your. Um, around your um, axle, while a vertical, like the one here, gives you a full 180 degrees uh, coverage on your on your axle. Um, these are the preference, um, just some preferences, the, uh, ver the horizontal uh, give you uh, the motor upbound and they're much easier to assemble um, and um, uh, repair on your ship, uh, while the vertical ones um, are much time uh, more powerful. So congratulations on um, on learning about your April requirement eight uh, A B C E and a little bit of D. Uh, I hope now you take this to your uh, skipper or advancement chair and um, and start applying what you've learned. Fair winds and following seas.